Welcome to Get Art Smart. I'm George Ann Lees, Cultural Affairs Supervisor for the City, and with me is co host Richard Newsham, the City's Marketing Specialist. Hey, George Ann. Hey, Richard. Look out. The City I'm of Ventura's <laughs> vaunted public art program has broken loose from its permanent galleries and park settings to go on the move into the streets and now in place with installations of temporary public art around our city. We are delighted to have Ventura Public Art Project Manager Toby Roach as our guest to discuss the whys and hows of our city's temporary rotating and street public art projects. Joining Toby for the first segment is Michelle Stevens, a green business owner and team leader for an exciting art installation for the Ventura Art Walk in July. On the second segment, artist John Bacoy joins us as we focus on the amazing gallery of windows at the Coastal Community Cancer Center, where artwork rotates quarterly and can be viewed directly from the street and sidewalk. Toby is a fine art graduate of California State University Channel Islands, who, as a vid visiting student in China at the Jing Dezhen Ceramic Institute, well <laughs> thank you, specialized in Asian culture and the history of porcelain craft. She is an award-winning artist and art teacher who finds boundary-freeing inspiration for her work everywhere, from bits of pop culture and wise sayings to meditation and mystical diagrams called yantras. Michelle Stevens is a young, eco-minded entrepreneur who owns and operates the refill shop in downtown Ventura. Since 2010, she and her business have garnered many accolades, including innovative Innovator of the Year from the National Association of Women Business Owners, Ventura County Chapter, the number one eco-friendly business in Ventura County, and the Environmental Excellence Awards from the Ventura Chamber of Commerce. Wow. Wow. Well, welcome both of you. Um, Toby and Michelle, we're going to get a little bit of more background, and we're going to start with you, Toby. Um, can you tell me how you became involved with the City of Ventura Public Art Program and since you've become the public art manager, what does that job entail? All right, well, I started off uh, kind of my introduction to public art as an intern. I was going to school at Cal State Channel Islands, as Richard mentioned, and we had an opportunity, the city put on an opportunity to um, participate in a public art conservation internship during the summer. And so I signed up and uh, we spent the summer learning from Sculpture Conservation Studios, a professional conservancy in Los Angeles. And they taught us all kinds of very important things having to do with art conservation. And um, we learned how to clean sculptures properly. And um, we participated in a lot of the conservation on a, the River Trail project, which is about 31 mile markers along the Ventura Bike Trail. And um, from there, after having that experience, um, here and there for smaller projects, I was called back by the Lisa Zaid, who was at the time the public art project manager, to come and do some, clean some of those different sculptures throughout the city. And so that opened the doors for me as a project manager now. And um, I guess my job now entails more of the logistics is uh, having to do with the conservation of the city's art collection and some of the conservation I still go out and do myself because I do like to get out and, and see what's going on in town. So, um, And I get to work on really cool projects once in a while um, and have different artists in the community uh, be commissioned to make new art for the city, which is always exciting. Well, just a follow up, um, I'm curious to know how your travels and particularly your experience in China um, affected your life, uh, the artwork you do, and also your job, because it seems like it's amazing that artists get to work with another artist on projects, which is sometimes unusual in government. Yeah, it, I enjoy that very much. Um, my, my travel to China was my first uh, travel outside of, of the United States, uh -huh. and it was probably the most diverse thing I could possibly <laughs> do. Um, but it was excellent for uh, building of character and and perspective in a, world, in a worldly way. Um, as an artist, I certainly recognized the great contrast and in, in China. I also visited India for a time. Um, and China was hugely different than India um, in that it was still very gray. I was in a, in a small province that was still, uh, it, it lacked expression, it lacked um, a sense of, of religion or faith or anything like that. Um, 
but my study of the historical porcelain craft was, was rich and I enjoyed it very much. The people were very curious about our country and our language um, and how it's helped affected me as an artist I think it's just grew, gave me a greater sense of perspective of the world and where we come from and what a blessing it is that we have the opportunities that we have here in our country and to be creatively expressive and particularly in our city which is rich with the arts and um, I'm really happy to be a part of that. Well there's um a lot of the art, as, as you are a boundary-breaking artist, so, so is the public art, recent public art projects too. Um, can you tell us about some of these on-the-move projects? Um, the bus shelters, painted, uh, the painted traffic signal utility boxes, the bicycle racks. Um, what's the goal of these art in the street pu public art projects? Um, I think to create a sense of place, to create a a little surprise and you know at, on your mundane sort of day-to-day -day travel whether you're walking biking driving you know you are interacting whether you realize it or not with art in our city and each one of these projects has been done by local artists so everyone is different and and it's sort of connected our community artistically so yes we have bike racks that, we know we could have just put some regular old bike racks, but we wanted to make them special. And we're also trying to promote, you know, riding your bike a little bit more, so it makes it more fun to pull up to a dragonfly and park your bike there. <laughs> um, the, the utility boxes were just sort of gray and drab, and we thought, what a great canvas, mm -hmm. you know, to try to... And there's so many of them, and we're hoping actually we're doing, we're kind of running a, an adopt a box program right now looking for sponsorship so we can continue to hire artists at a small fee to paint all throughout the city. Um, what else can I ask? What else that's, can I well, that's I'm going to follow up with the final piece here, which is PLACE, which is an acronym for Public and Local Artists Creating Environments. And that's yes. what Michelle is here for as well. Can you yes. tell us a little bit about the program, how it got started? And it seems like it's, it's kind of being revived for uh, this upcoming art walk. It's been going on since the early thousands, which was beyond my time. Um, but most recently, we have um, a project, actually four selected commissioned artists to participate in this. It's a, each project is temporary. We have a dance performance, we have um, a graphic artist who is going to be impacting one of the, uh, during Art Walk we have a big pod that the city has been granted, so he'll be doing something very artistic with that. Uh, we have a sculpture which is called The Spirit of the Sea, which is going to be at the California Mini Park, um, Santa Clara in California, and it's a cross between a whale skeleton and a tomo canoe, mm -hmm. which is historic to our particular land here in Ventura. And then we have the Whale's Tail Project, which Michelle will share lots of information about. And which brings us to Michelle. <laughs> um, let's, let's start with a little bit about your background. Um, you're an environment, tell us about yourself as an environmentalist. Um, your years living on a sailboat um, in the, in the Evergl Everglades and the summer conservancy camps. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, um, I had a pretty unique sort of upbringing. I was an only child and when I was quite young, my parents made the decision to live on a 42 foot sailboat and I was stayed on that for about 10 years and it was a really unique way to look at the world. I wasn't around, we did some traveling, so I wasn't around children the whole time, which also I do think kind of affected me spending a little bit more time around adults. And it was just really neat, you know? We were in the bayou in Mandeville, which is kind of near New Orleans, and then we moved to Florida, and so I got to spend some time in the Everglades, and I've always just had a love for, for the water. It connects us all. So how did you come up with the concept of the refill shop? And you might want to tell our audience just exactly what it is. Sure. So <laughs> the refill shop is an eco bath store located here in downtown Ventura. We're about to hit our five year anniversary on July 2nd, which is really exciting. 
Um, and kind of the short story of how it came to be is um, I was finishing up school. I went to Brooks for visual journalism and I wasn't too sure about that being my direction when, when I was finished with school. And you know, it was like, all right, it's time to really kind of grow up and, and do something. And, and life is so short. I really wanted to put my life energy into something that I, I really felt strongly about. And, it was just kind of a kind of popped into my head one day. I had bought this pretty bottle for my olive oil, just a randomly empty, really pretty bottle. And I, I went to go buy olive oil to put in my pretty olive oil bottle. And I got it from the store and I took it home. And 20 minutes later, I was pouring it into the pretty bottle. And I was done with that bottle from the store. And I, I kind of looked at it and was like, wow, did I really need this for that 20 minutes? Because they're really hard to clean oil bottles. And so from there, you know, I, I had a lot of time to think. Um, I took some time off after school and did a road trip with my boyfriend and did lots of thinking. And I was just like, well, what if I could just refill that? And then I was like, well, what if I could refill other stuff? And so it kind of morphed from that. I don't do olive oil. We don't do anything edible, although there are some places in town that do. And um, I just, you know, it, it felt like it really fit me and who I was. Both my parents were in retail when I was little. and kind of in my blood, I like shopping, and, and I also really wanted to make a difference. So this opportunity gave me such a lovely combination of the two where I can really focus on creating this great experience for customers to come in and make a more eco-conscious choice without really sacrificing anything. It's really fun to come in. You get to refill all your bath, body, home, and cleaning stuff, shampoo, lotion, dish soap, bubble bath. We cover a lot of bases. And then most of it is unscented and custom scentable. So that's really fun and makes it really special for everybody. So what led you to submit a proposal for place? <laughs> I mean, you had never done a, a large installation like that. And how did you come up with this brilliant idea that, that's so interactive with the community? <laughs> well, I had some help. Um, I took my friend Mike Emus out to lunch. He's got just a really great brain that I wanted to pick. I was kind of honestly searching for out-of-the-box marketing ideas. Not that I want this to be that now, now that it's become what it has, but he was like, what if you had people you know, bring in, you know, four of their empty, you know, single use bottles and you gave them a nice glass bottle. And I was like, well, I don't really like giving stuff away. <laughs> and then I went home and took a bath with lots of fun stuff from the <laughs> refill shop. And I, you know, was sitting there and was like, well, we could make stuff because we have really big windows at the shop. So, you know, my boyfriend does most of it and we have to really get in there and, and do something to decorate it. You don't just put some stuff on a table that looks cute. You really have to make it. I was like, well, what could we make out of these bottles? And then I was like, oh, I know it would be the coolest possible thing to make from plastic bottles would be a whale. And the reasoning for that, you know, is, is really a heartfelt one for me. I think it's just absolutely insane that these largest animals on our planet are dying from our single use plastic addiction. Well, we're almost out of time, so I think we, we better jump to what, what is the public com and the school component uh, to this project? Well, we're working to um, get some schools and maybe some also like summer camp sort of organizations involved in having children decorate some of these bottles for us, especially the ones that will kind of be in the more eye level range of the sculpture. We want, we want, I want more voices in there. I really want for everybody to, to, to kind of get what you need from the sculpture without adding any sort of plaque. I want it to speak for itself. And, you know, children are the future. And, and I think that they really understand that, that we need to kind of change our ways and save this amazing planet that we live on. So I, I really am excited to, to get them to paint like ideas of, you know, ways to be eco-friendly or a picture of the ocean or what they love about nature, any of those kind of things on the bottles and then incorporate that. And um, what we're really excited about is on July 18th, the first day of Art Walk, we are going to be having the Whale's Tail Extravaganza. So this, this sculpture will be in place and the top part will already have the bottles, but we're kind of trying to get the community involved and get some, some bottle threading happening on the day of, maybe some making some bottle bricks, which is where you, you stuff trash into a plastic bottle to turn it into a brick, have some nonprofits out there talking to people and and I'm just really excited. I have a really great, our core team is also Ryan Kircher, my boyfriend, who's a film guy and amazing problem solver. Mm -hmm. And we also have Tyrone McGrath, who is a welder with experience building really large objects. And so I'm so grateful that 
to have the team to and put it all together. And where is it going to be placed? It's going to be placed in between Crown Plaza and Aloha, up towards Harbor. Okay. So it's right there by the ocean for kind of maximum impact. Oh, very exciting. Yes, it is. Wow. Um, thank Time you. Flew. It did. It went too <laughs> fast. Thank you, Toby and Michelle, for speaking with us about these exciting projects. Once again, find out more about PLACE and other temporary public art projects at www.cityaventura.artops. Okay. Okay? Thank you so much for being on. Thank you. Several years ago, the new Coastal Community Cancer Center arose on the Community Memorial Hospital campus featuring what I'll call Ventura's first drive-by art museum. That's because the building itself is wrapped on three sides with huge picture windows that function as light boxes full of changing art you can view outdoors from the sidewalks, parking lot, and street. Ventura Public Art Project Manager Toby Roach is with us once again to discuss this joint project of the City of Ventura Public Art Program and Community Memorial Hospital that features rotating works that inspire residents and visiting patients alike with the inspirational qualities of art. And with her is one of the artists whose work is currently on view there, John Bacoy. Welcome, John and Toby. Thank Welcome you. to the show. Well, I guess I get the first question. You so, do. Toby, tell us about this exceptional gallery space for rotating exhibits. Uh, who created it? Who sustains it? who curates it, and John answered, me, me, me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Even though I think you do a lot of curating. <laughs> um, well, I'd be happy to answer that. Uh, the Coastal Community Cancer Center, when they were building that center, um, they asked the city of Ventura Public Art Department if they would be able to team up to have us to curate that space. Um, so it's kind of a, a joint relation, and uh, we, I, get to help curate the space and we have um, an excellent installer who is great at sort of compositionally setting those pieces in each window, um, hangs them wonderful and uh, let's see. Well, I'll, I'll, who, determines, who determines who exhibits in this space and how many artists are generally featured and how long do the exhibits remain? Originally, uh, we did a big call to artists, and we still have a kind of ongoing call to artists on our website, which anybody can apply for. Um, and those sort of slowed down, and so I get to go out and visit artists, and our first Friday's events are really excellent for that because I get to go out and see the art. And uh, so I'll kind of do a lot of outreach at this point okay. uh, to help and to curate those spaces. Usually we have um, an artist per side of the, the building. Uh, John has an exceptionally large body of very vibrant work and so we decided that it would be great to exhibit in all three sides of the window. So Yeah, that's just great. So John, you have kind of a remarkable story beginning in the Philippines uh, where you were kind of an art student and then you became a graphic artist. Yes. and. Uh, you had kind of other jobs and things. Tell us the, about the earlier part of your career. Yes, uh, I received my uh, college degree, Bachelor in Fine Arts in Advertising in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, but you were involved as an, as an art student, right? You did some mentoring, some art projects there oh, as well? Uh, I started uh, drawing when I was in grade school. Mm -hmm. And then high school, I did a lot of drawings too. And I started uh, uh, paintings on canvas in college because I like joining a uh, painting competition. So you were drawing and painting yes. um, into the Philippines. And then you came to Southern California. Yes. And what happened to you then? Oh, uh, one day there's, there's a garage sale on our, on our uh, neighborhood. And then one neighbor selling uh, the easel, selling the easel. So I was thinking I want to paint again. So I bought the easel and then started paintings again almost every day. Yeah. <laughs> so then you story. became, a, are you almost exclusively a, a painter now? Yes. That's all, okay. And then um, how did you hear about the, the opportunity to exhibit at the Cancer Center? Oh, because uh, uh, I display my paintings on different uh, uh, coffee shop and one of them is uh, uh, and, and on the galleries too, like uh, Red Brick Gallery. Mm -hmm. And Red Brick Gallery, the owner 
Jennifer, Jennifer, yes, uh, her friend, she. and she recommended me to Toby. Fabulous. Now, the cancer center is kind of an emotional space, and of course it's treating a disease that is a recent documentary by Ken Burns that called cancer the emperor of all maladies. So mm -hmm. thinking about kind of the serious and emotional nature of the building, did it have, uh, did it have any effect in terms of what uh, paintings you decided to exhibit there? Oh, because uh, you can notice all my paintings is all about hope, okay. hope and aspiration and full of challenges. Mm -hmm. And of course they're just filled with light and incredible yeah, yeah. art yeah. palette. More of light, yeah. 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 And Toby, I understand that you help the artists um, select their work, some of their work for these, uh, this exhibit space. What kind of artists and artworks do you look for um, in, relation to, in, relation, in relationship to the Cancer Center? And what should the art mean to the patients and their families? Well, I think first and foremost, we wanted to kind of create an inspirational space and make a place that may be fearful to folks be a little more pleasant to visit. Um, as far as the artwork itself, it's, it's very broad. I mean, we're, we're very much open to most anything. Um, we've had portraits, we've had still life, we've had a lot of abstract work. Um, some bright, some muted. I mean, it's, it's really open to what, what you got, but, you know. And how do you think it, what do you think it does, how do you think it, it impacts the families who, and the patients who have to go there? Hopefully in a positive way, you know, I hope to bring them a little bit of, of joy to their visit and um, maybe even some surprise, like, oh, that's something really fun to see or maybe it brings some inspiration to them about, you know, their whole process of what they're going through and does give them hope. Yeah, I think it's kind of remarkable. And when you go to most any hospital building, they're just kind of overwhelming and here's a building that you can actually look at the art from the outside before you go in. So I, I think it's just a wonderful project. Now, uh, John, you are also kind of a, um, a fitness person with uh, in running mm -hmm. and uh, I think you've done have you done a marathon you've done triathlons Triathlon, yes so oh. how, how does oh, this Lord. this kind of emphasis on physical fitness and health fit in with your with your artistry with your what, what you paint oh yeah yeah I like uh, I like exercise too I like racing so I like triathlon so after after uh, painting the morning after I paint I go biking or biking or running, then after I come back, after I, I took a shower, then do it painting again on one hour, I, I feel very rela relaxed. I can, I can really express my emotion and put on the canvas. Wow, so they're directly related. You're kind of an artist on the move, mm -hmm. and that yeah, is reflected yeah. by the energy that you mm -hmm. put into the paintings. Yeah. Tell us about the, the nature of your paintings. Um, you have very you have a lot of different classifications on your website. Can you can you talk about that and how you categorize them? Yes, uh, more more of my paintings is abstract. Uh, one of them I call it freestyle. The freestyle I call it freestyle because I use a lot uh, big brass when I do that. Big brass mm, with some circle, circle like a what you call that. Some the rings or stamps? No, some rings. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And I have a, a rhythm when uh, I paint a lot of like curves, leaves, like that, and a lot of colors. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. and you also do some representational work too um, that, that are depictions of, of landscapes and things like that? A landscape, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you really have a wide range. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, can you remind people what your website is? It's really kind of fun to explore and look. Uh, can you remember offhand what your? Yeah. <laughs> can you give us the URL for it? What is it? Uh, um, is it johnbacoy.com? Yeah, www.johnbacoy.com. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's really fun to look at all the stuff there. <laughs> yeah. 
So um, what inspires you in the subjects that you paint? Um, would you say, obviously, your running and your fitness inspire you? Uh, what other things do you think, would you say, give you your ideas for your paintings? Oh, I, I, I would say uh, it's from, my, from our, from human emotions. So when I paint, like, I feel dreams. How do you, how do you fulfill your dreams? So I put on the canvas, like, I feel it when I'm doing that. So in a way, these, they're, they're almost like dreams, dreamscapes in a way, or an invitation to, to dream or aspire to mm, yes. a different or a better life and, then. So and hopes. That, yeah, I think the colors and everything really sort of reflect that. They're really gorgeous. Yeah, thank you. Um, Toby, who installs the art and, um, and what is the most challenging, what do you both, this is a question, what was the most challenging thing about exhibiting in this particular space? I, I would say, well, we have an installer of Ventura Art Hanging, Ryan Haslam, excellent, if you need an installer. Um, mm -hmm. The biggest challenge for me was, you know, sitting down with John and trying to decide which pieces, you know, kind of eliminating, which he has so many and they were all fantastic, which ones are we going to select and which, you know, so, uh, but as far as hanging in the space, it's, it's quite easy for us to you know get them in there and set them all up and we mm. all did that together and uh, the exhibit turned out really nice. And Toby sure we're did. almost out of time. Um, can you tell me how artists can find out about exhibiting at the um, Coastal Community Cancer Center? Um, how do they contact you? Uh, as you've mentioned earlier we have a, on our city website Ventura Art Ops page um, we have a PDF there where it gives you all the specifications for submitting a proposal to mm -hmm. exhibit there. And also, if you just want to give me a call, I think my phone number is on there as well. Okay. So give me a call and we'll talk about it. We'll put some art up. Great. I want to thank Toby Roach, Michelle Stevens, and John Bacoy for appearing on our show. These artists and many others in our community are devoted to creating Ventura's Art on the Move that offers unexpected and on-the-street encounters with art that is enriching and exciting to our residents and our visitors. View more Get Art Smart programs and calendars of cultural activities online at cityofventura.net slash getartsmart. Thank you for joining us for Get Art Smart, and we'll see you next time. And John and Toby, thank you so much for appearing on the show today. Thank you. Thank you.